In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new Mamba F50. Now, this is not the Pro, so keep that in mind. We're going to do a full breakdown of the design features of this board and also a couple of interesting things that you might not have known about ESCs. Since it's going to be a slightly longer video than usual, I'll have the times tables down below and you can also check in the video progress bar to whatever part you want to skip through. And towards the end of the video, we do have the basic beginner setup guide, which shows you how to connect it to any flight controller, how to give this power, and how this should be oriented into your flight controller. But first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things they do provide us in the packaging here. We also get an XT60 connector, but we don't get the power wires for that, so you have to get that on your own. And a nice fat 1000 microfarad 35 volt low ESR capacitor, which should be installed. And we also get two connectors right here. Now, I really hate this diatone. I really hate that you guys are not doing the color coding and everything is white. And the reason why I don't like that is because for beginners, when they're routing the wires, they won't know what wire is which and you have a high probability of burning your flight controller and or ESE if you plug things in backwards. Uh, but with this connector, it's fine because this connector is meant to only work on other Mamba flight controller products since this is an ESC. However, this is where it really matters. These should definitely be color coded. Please don't go cheap on us. Even though they're silicone, which is really great, but you should definitely look into color coding these wires to reduce error and also frying components, especially for beginners. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the advanced breakdown before we get into the connection setup. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're going to be breaking down the Mamba F50. This is not the F50 Pro because that's stating that it's BL Heli 32. This is a BL Heli S ESC. So we could actually take a closer look at these microcontroller units, which are BB2 chips. So this is for BL Heli S, which is also really good. There's no problem with that. So let's quickly break down some of the components here. So first of all, I've looked up the data sheets on these MOSFETs and it seems to be that they're N-channel FETs. However, it's very hard to know because I couldn't find the exact last three numbers on this FET, but I found the first part and it just states N-channel FETs, high switching N-channel FETs. But if you take a closer look on the other side, the last three numbers are slightly different. So it's probably using a P and an N or they're still using two N-channel FETs. Now, What's the benefit of, an, of using two N channel instead of an N and a P channel? Well, two N channel FETs are more efficient. But by efficiency, I don't mean you'll get more flight time. By efficiency, I mean you get less heat, which is always really great with these components because heat is your enemy, especially with FETs. So if it is using two N channel FETs, it's really great. And I think they are, but don't take my word for it. I, I couldn't find the data sheets for these, um, but it seems as if it is. So that's one thing. So we could probably give it the benefit of the doubt for two N channel FETs. Now you will never notice a difference anyways, but theoretically you might get a bit more longer lasting FETs on the board here. Now, another main thing of ESCs is always look out for is the filtration now here we have really really good filtration actually really great filtration so we can see we have all of this going on for it and this is something you always want to look for if you have the option or the opportunity to purchase a ESC with a lot of filtration and also big sized FETs like these guys right there then especially for a 6S build, this is the kind of things I look for if I wanted to make myself a reliable, long lasting 6S build. And by the way, price doesn't always mean quality. So it comes down to a lot of things. Also, there's a really nice design aspect here, which I'm gonna cover as well. So we see we have great filtration, great fat size for 6S builds, which is really awesome. So this is four to 6S. And we see we have two shot resistors, which in charge of a dedicated current pad. And again, this is the top view and this is the bottom. There we go. And they're supposed to be installed your quadcopter this way right here. You have motor one back here, motor two up here, motor three and motor four. Now a nice, a really nice design feature that I really like to see here, especially if you're not gonna be using the same flight controller or the, a flight controller from the same company is that they broken out the wires to connect any other flight controller. But if you're gonna buy any other flight controller to connect to this, you need to make sure it takes in battery voltage because this ESC gives battery voltage for the flight controller. And that's where we could access them. We could either go to these solder pads right there or we can go to the connector right here. We see VCC and ground and that will power up your flight control. We're getting into more detail of the beginner setup later on in this video here. And we see our motors one, two, three, four, not connected. This I think is a design feature that they left because if it's the Pro, it's about the same design. This is where the telemetry would be coming out if this was a B, uh, BL Heli 32 ESC. And here we have a dedicated current pad. Now again, something really nice that I really love seeing here are these holes right here for the capacitor, which I'll cover in more great detail later on. But this is a really nice design aspect that makes your life so much better when you're soldering your XC60s and your low ESR capacitor. Because this is 
isn't meant to be set up on a 6s build and a 4s but it's it's really it has a 6s in mind here from the filtration down to the holes for the capacitor and even the design of the board now you're like well, what do you mean by the design of the board well let me explain it so let's take a look at the bottom side of the board here's the logic we have fet driver and microcontroller unit microcontroller unit fet driver fet driver microcontroller unit, and so on so all the logic or all the brain is going down here. Now, when this happens, this cuts the copper quite a lot here. So you're losing quite a lot of copper in order to make the connections uh, between these. You can see these little dents and dips and stuff. This is due to the copper being cut. And if we take a closer look on the top side, so what they've done here with the top is you have much more copper that's not cut to give you much more power delivery. And well, what does that mean? Well, if you don't have that much power delivery and you have basically you're going to have resistance and with resistance, you get a lot of heat build up and you don't want that. So this is a nice design aspect. And it's kind of the same thing that we saw with the iFlight stuff, some of their stuff where they use a double board design where they design just the power delivery system on one board. Then they bring in another board that has all the logic and they solder it right into it. Now, I don't know how reliable those have been. But I guess since I didn't see anything about them, maybe they've been just fine. So this is kind of the same design aspect, but into one board. And, and it's it's really thoughtful. It's really nice that they didn't do both sides where they put the logic here because that just gives you much more power delivery. And um, good job, actually. It's really nice here. Now, another thing they've decided to do, which I think this is the first I've seen maybe, is they used, I'm guessing these are two 3.3 volt regulators. And obviously it's going to be powering up these. I'm guessing one powers up two ESCs and then the other one powers up the other two ESCs up here, which again is really nice. Now on every ESC, you'll see around six resistors packed up together just like that. If you can see those right there. And those are basically voltage dividers. And I want to just explain something to you. Sometimes an ESC might tell you it's only to a maximum of a 5S or a 4S. But if you look at the FETs, you're like, holy crap, these could handle 100 volts. So why is it only rated for a 4S four, uh, instead of a 6S? Well, it's usually because of these voltage, that's one reason, is these voltage dividers. They, and what these do is they step down the voltage to 3.3 volts. We're like, okay, well, what the hell do 3.3 volts have to do with anything? Well, for the microcontroller unit to know which phase to turn on next, because you know how a motor has three wires, each of them is called a phase. And uh, wait, let's just say this phase was off and the motor passed by it and this sends electrical signal back and it's probably a higher volt than 3.3 volts here. And when it does that, it goes through this voltage divider. Now this has to be calculated correctly. This is an inefficient way to drop voltage. Um, but for example, on a 4S setup, this is you know meant to bring back 3.3 volts because these only take 3.3 volt maximum. And if they were calculated that way, if you put a, a 6S build, it might bring back five volts and then just fry the microcontroller unit. So that's also something you take into consideration. These have to be calculated perfect in order to run 6S. Now these FETs could be 50 volts plus, but you're, you, you theoretically might have a high probability of burning the microcontrol unit if you put anything above uh, you know, the 6S rated. It's usually because of these voltage dividers right here. So that's something to take into consideration as well. And uh, once this senses it, then this tells the FET driver which one to turn on next, and then that turns on the next phase, next phase, next phase, and so on. I'll get into more detail on that once I finish doing my open hardware ESC. It's basically based on the same design, the BB2 chip. And I'll also show you how to read the assembly code to know uh, on different firmwares. I'll explain also different firmwares, how to know the pinouts. Basically, it's kind of like, a, what is it called? Like Betaflight, every, every firmware has a different pinout, like the letter, I think. And then the uh, time or the number, like, you know, you have 30 or or whatever. And that, that's usually the dead time. So how long these should be off before the next one turns on. And I'll get into more of that later on. We're going to keep that for a later topic. I want to see if you guys are interested in that. Let me know that in the comment section. I'll start preparing on that as soon as possible for you guys. Um, so, yeah, that's going to include you for the breakdown. I really like the looks of it. I am using its F60 Pro's Bigger Brother, which has been proving itself super reliable. And uh, that one just has a heat sink and it's using BL Heli 32, but it's the same design aspect. So uh, fortunately, there's no in there, there's no flaws in that design aspect or I would have seen it on the F60. And this should also carry that same design aspect and also hopefully the performance as well. So that's all I could say until we actually put it on a build, which again is going to be put on a build very soon. So, all right, so now let's go ahead and jump into the beginner setup guide where I show you how to connect this to anything you want. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're going to be discussing the orientation of how it should be installed because that's very important and also how to install a low ESI capacitor and your power leads if you didn't know how to do that. So the first thing you want to make sure of is the motor numbering here. So we can see here's motor one, we have motor two, 
motor three and motor four. This is perfect default beta flight setup. So this should be installed in your quadcopter just like this. The battery leads in the back and that should be in the front and this should be up top. So this you should be able to see that when you're looking at it inside your quadcopter. So now let's discuss the low ESR capacitor. Now they do provide a low ESR capacitor, not this exact one, but they all share the same characteristics. Now for every capacitor you'll ever get, you'll see one side that has a stripe. Not You won't usually see the minus line, but where the stripe is, like right here, that's going to be the black wire, which is the ground, which is the minus right there. So the ground's gonna go right into this part right here. Now, if you don't have these holes on an ESC, then you wanna put it with the battery where the battery the XC60 is gonna go. And also, let's just cover this as well. This is gonna go right here as well. It's gonna go right on that right there. So that's where the ground's gonna go. If you didn't have a hole, then you wanna connect these together, and it could be a nightmare. And this is a really nice design aspect where they have a separate hole for the uh, low ESR capacitor because it just makes installation so much easier. Even for me, it could be very annoying. Now the next one's going to be the power. So there we go. We're just gonna grab that and just plug that right there. That's where you're gonna wanna solder that. And here's the power from this. And also, we're just gonna install it right over here. And just like that, you have your power set up on this. Now, and again, make sure you take note of the capacitor or it will blow up right in your face as soon as you plug it in, if you plug it in backwards. So take note of where the stripe is and then the pin next to that stripe is the ground, which is the minus. So keep that in mind, very important. So let's go ahead and see how we would connect this to any flight controller. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're going to be discussing how you would connect this ESC or actually any 4-in-1 ESC to any flight controller. Now, these pads on this flight controller are incorrect, but we're just going to assume that this is the layout of this flight controller. So you could kind of uh, follow along here. So this is just theoretical here. Now, the first things we need to identify, and it's very important to do this, is the power output of the ESC. If it says VCC in ground, then that means battery voltage. So if you're putting a 6S battery, then it's gonna give the flight controller 6S voltage. So you need to make sure your flight controller can take 6S voltage or 4S voltage, but make sure they're identical. So it takes 6S voltage. Because some flight controllers only take five volts and you'll immediately burn your flight controller. So you don't want that. So you wanna make sure. So for example, we know that this flight controller takes three to 6S voltage which is perfect because this is what this flight this ESC is going to give now some ESCs give out five volts but it's really rare nowadays but most of the time they just give battery voltage out so once you've identified this then everything is going to be compatible 100% so the first thing we want to identify is the VCC and ground of the flight controller and the ESC so here we have our ground from the ESC and here is our VCC from the ESC. So this is battery voltage and this is the ground. Next, we want to identify the same exact thing on our flight controller. And if we take a look at the instruction manual, this again, this is hypothetical on this, we can see that, oh, the first two are VCC and ground. So those are just gonna connect directly. So here we go, we're just gonna connect the VCC and we're gonna connect the ground right there. So like that, we have power. So if you plug in, for example, if the motors were soldered on, if you plug in the power, then your flight controller will boot up. So it's really great. And uh, But you won't hear initialization beep from the flight controller to the motors. You might hear just the beginning tone, but you won't hear the initialization beep. Now just ignore that part, don't worry about it. So the next thing we want to identify on the ESC and as well as the flight controllers, numbers one through four, they could be called M1, M2, or they can be called uh, E1, or they could just be called number one, two, three, four. So for example, on this ESC, it's called E1, which means engine one, and M stands for motor one. So yeah, so here's ESC1, which is gonna be in charge of this right there. And it's very important you connect these correctly. And that's why the orientation does matter. So here on our flight control, we see that this, this wire right here is one and we would just connect it to motor one right there. So we would connect that just like that, whether it's solder or routing the connection. And here was motor two, so we're gonna go ahead and connect motor two. And then we have motor three and motor four. Now, usually you're left with two more, sometimes one, but most of the time two more. So after we connect the motor wires, we need to identify what are we left with. Usually most of them, 99% of them will have the current pad right here. So let's go ahead and cover the current before we cover the telemetry, because this one doesn't have telemetry. So the current is just gonna basically connect to the current pad of the uh, flight controller. Usually all of them do have this, and it's gonna be that one right there. So we'll just do a hypothetical connection right there. So there we go, so current. So now usually we're left with telemetry if this was a BL Heli 32 ESC, however, it's not. So it's saying not connected, so don't connect anything to this. Now, if it is a BL Heli 32, it would say telemetry or it would say a TX. This would be either uh, telemetry or 
TX. So that's how you know it's telemetry. And on a flight controller, it would either be called RX a number. So RX4, RX1, any of those. Usually RX6s, but it doesn't matter. Usually it's a different number, but it would either be called RX or telemetry as well on a flight controller. So these are the names on the ESC that you might see. And these are the ones on the FC. So FC up here and then ESC names uh, down here. These ones right there. And uh, that basically connected telemetry. So you just basically grab this one, boom, connect it to the telemetry of this one. Uh, but make sure the current goes to current. It's very simple. Just make sure you do not uh, cross the VCC in ground uh, and, or else you'll just basically fry your flight controller. You can say bye bye to it. So that's something you don't want to do. You just give it all that battery's power in the wrong way into the flight controller and just basically burn it. Sometimes you can even damage your ESC. And it's just that simple. Just make sure you identify VCC and ground, connect them appropriately, one, two, three, and four. And basically you could use it just like that. You don't even need current, you don't even need telemetry. But it's nice to add the current so you know how many amps you've drawn and how many amps you've used and currently drawing. So it's really useful information. And that's basically it. That's how you'd connect any flight control to this ESE. All you need to do is identify one, two, three, four, five, six, six main wires, seven if you want current, eight if you want telemetry. But these main ones are the six VCC ground one, two, three, four. And that's it. It's, it's really simple power and motors. That's it. That's all you need to do. And these will just send the uh, signal to the motor telling it what power to be on. And then the ESC would give it that power to spin to whatever uh, it needs it to be. And well, that's going to include it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something today. And if you did, come join my Patreon. You don't only just support the channel. You get a ton of giveaways. You get access to my secret shop. And you get access to all of my open hardware ESCs, open hardware flight controllers, just about every single project I've ever done. And you can do whatever you want with those. You could design your own from them and sell them. I don't have a problem. I would actually be proud of you. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.